Welcome back, true horse horsemanship. Sun's finally shining, still muddy. But anyway, we got a little air, mare here that she gets anxious about taking the saddle, mounting, uh, and a few other things. I've worked her for a little bit, like to show beginning when I started, but everything is couldn't. So basically, when I first started handling this mare, you would thought she led fine, but she didn't. Because as soon as she got a little upset, she didn't care where you was at. She's going to try to plow through him. When I watched the handler, owner handle this horse, when she was leading, at some point she grabbed him up here. People, I'm going to say this again, do not grab up here. It's just going to make it worse. You're dealing with an animal that's just going to feel more claustrophobic, so it's going to just escalate. And this I'll be touching on, and she's supposed to be a little bit barn sour. But funny thing is, since I got control of her feet, she's pretty well came out of that. And that's when you get a barn sour horse. I just got an email the other day. Uh, people say, well, I'll take her in little spouts and go this far, but she's still anxious. <clears throat> on a bad barn sour horse, don't think you're going to take her out there and work them. Work them at their safe area and get that heart rate up. You know, I tell people move the hip. And so I'm going to match how fast I move that hip by that horse's uh, momentum. In other words, she's not going to be bad now because we worked on this. But let's, because I'm not going to get after her, but let's say she's all over the place. She's got hair. Let's say she's all over the place and jumping around. I'm going to bend that and go after this hip. And I'm going to go after this hip real fast. Right now I'm not because she knows to give and move that hip. The first day she didn't want to. But I want her bent too. I'm not going to depend on my line to control this horse. I'm going to depend on that hip. And if she tries to push forward, I'm going to really go after that hip. Get that heart rate up. And at some point, back off. And when you let him rest, then walk him away. Let him rest somewhere else and go back to the barn or whatever and do it again. You know, I had... It bothers me when people say, well, my horse is having anxiety. The anxiety that's brought on to that horse is by human nature. It's bottom line. You coddle, you cater to them, and don't want poor little Johnny to get upset. Well, little Johnny's going to have to get upset to overcome it. And so you got to learn how to control it. In the same way, if I go to this hip, I expect her to bend like she is right now. Now, let's say she straightened that nose out. I go after that hip because as soon as I get that hip moving, you see her get on the bend. Now first this horse, uh, basically on groundwork all she really knew was uh, go around in a circle. To me that's not groundwork. Lunging a horse is not groundwork. So all I want to do when I first start out, I'm going to point, go behind that jaw, she backs up, that's her problem. But as soon as she goes forward, we take the pressure off of her. Now at this point, when I want her to bend, I'm going to shorten my line a little bit, go out that hip, move that hip over. Now I got her facing the other direction, I'm going to point, way behind that jaw, Get that steering wheel away from you. I see so many people when they try to move their horse from the ground, they, they're trying to get back to the hiney. And the hiney disengages, that's why. So you gotta remember, this front end's the steering wheel. So I'm gonna point, wave my whip, keep waving, waving. She goes, I'm gonna leave her alone. This is Groundwork 101. See, she, she resents me controlling her feet. That's where that head shaking's going. 
So if she starts throwing that head, we'll move that hip. I should not be able to touch her. Now with her, she doesn't really know how to give to that halter. So at some point, I'm going to pull. The reason I'm going to start pulling on that halter at some point, I want her to feel that pull pressure and learn to give to that pull pressure while her feet are moving forward. So we're going to point. She moves, we leave her alone. In other words, I got to go back and really halter break this horse. So we're going to pull. Good girl. And ask for back. And what happened was with the saddle, I guess somebody tried to put a saddle on her and the saddle slid underneath her. And since then she doesn't take the saddle. Started working her, there was no standing. She would move all over the place. And like I said, I gotta make believe here a little bit. But let's say she does start moving. I didn't go here and try to stop her and say, poor little girl, Jamie, stop, 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 stop. Dang God dang it, stop. I didn't do that. She wants to move, fine. I'd, I'd get her moving. But she's gonna move at my pace, not hers. I'd take that control away from her. Good girl. But just don't put her on a circle. Work her back and forth. Do your homework to get her whether she's listening to you. Like right there, she's backing up. I don't care. I'll keep with behind that jaw until she does the right thing. Good. There. That was nice. Now that time I didn't have to hardly put, touch that halter and she turned around. Good girl. Now like I said, I haven't tried to saddle with her. But we've done our groundwork. She's moving off my body pretty well. And she's listening to me. She's on the bend. I would like to see more eye. In other words, Ask her to move out. There, now I got. See right there, I did. I took that pressure off. Now I got both her eyes, so I didn't follow through. So since I had both her eyes, her trying to look at me, I didn't put follow through with the pressure, so she stopped, and that's what I'm looking for. You know, it's not well enough to just have this horse on the bend. Right there, she tried to push it through my hand. I went to that hip. I moved that hip. So I'm going to use this hip to control this horse. Now we go in a neutral. And now where she's ready for the next step. So now when I go in a neutral, if she doesn't stop when I want her to, I am, this one time you will see me jerk on a horse. So I'm gonna go in neutral right here. If that flank area gets past my shoulder, I'm gonna give her a bump. So we're gonna go back in neutral. You know, a barn sour horse, there, that's what I'm looking for. Once that halter's on that horse, I don't care if they're barn sour. They're going to work wherever I have to work them because they can be barn sour or they want. 
but when I put that lead on them, I expect them to mine and go with the program. Like I said, I haven't worked with a saddle, so we're going to start there because now I got all the things. Before I even start with my pad, before we even start with my pad, I'm going to start with my rope. I just try to get a feed for her, feel for her. to see how much because common sense tells you if she doesn't accept this there's no sense going with the pad she's not doing too bad but she's still flinging her head a little bit more than I would like so where will I go to the next step as soon as she stops flinging that head because right now there's no sense even going with the pad now when I fling my rope I get it way behind me and flip it So she did take that side, so we'll go to the other. Yeah, that's So she took that well. And like I said, before I move her out with the saddle on, so if I get, get it on her, I'll make sure I got my crest collar on her. Now you notice I didn't try to hold her still. I kept my rope in the cradle of my elbow. And the way I approach her, I approach her from the shoulder. I didn't chase her. Now I'm not going to tighten my girth yet on the front. And I don't know if she's used to a back girth or not. We're going to find out here pretty quick. Like right now, I've got my foot standing on the lead now if I if she showed me more signs of getting more brocky I would have had my rope in my cradle my arm like that so all I have to do is grab it and I got it so we're just gonna let her stand there Right now I'm reading her body. If you look at her neck and her ears, she's all tensed up. So if I ask her to move right now, it might go well or she might get bronchy with me. So I'm just going to let her stand here. Right there, her ears come up, point, ask her to step off. Good.
And like I said, I had a text from Teresa, the owner. She went on about how much anxiety this horse had when you saddle her. And if you notice, with me doing my groundwork first, getting control, getting her where she knows I'm going to control her feet, which in turn, with a herd animal, she knows if I want to control her feet and speak loud and clear to her and be fair to her, she's going to start feeling safe in my hands. So we're just going to start walking to this hip. Good girl. Now right there I did a little different. I put my right hand in front of her eye to keep her off me. Now we just ask for a little trot. So we went around a couple of times. We go in neutral. Let her stand. Point. Goes around one, two, going neutral. Now, right there, I didn't yank on her, even though her planks start getting past me. Because right when I went to neutral, she started transitioning down. So there was a change there. So I'm going to reward that change. I'm not going to just get after her time after time because. That's a good learning aspect to her because she's made the change and she didn't get me a bump on her. So we point. The way I handle horses, I know it's going to have a lot of anxiety. Is I don't have none. I have them just like they're a dead broke horse for the most part. So we go in neutral. I want her to stand there on her own. I don't want her to be so insecure that she wants to get on top of me. Some people right now would correct her because she looked over there. That's just to see what's going on over there. You know, there wasn't no, I'm getting ready to panic mode. That was just look. There, good girl. This is real basics, but sometimes even, good girl, a horse that's supposedly been ridden, you need to go to basics. So like I said, how I got her, and I knew she wasn't gonna take that saddle bad today because I've been working with her on the other part. She's learned to start to handle that anxiety instead of overreact. And I just start out, start moving that hip, and I move that hip as fast as I have to. Like I said earlier, if her, if she's a seven, my body is going to go to eight. I'm going to move her that hard. If she's a five, I'm going to go to a six. Then after a while, if I go to a four, she's going to a four. In other words, I'm going to start dictating the speed. She isn't. And you know, I've been getting a lot of emails and all about barn soured horses. This is the way you start with them. At first, if you've got a big enough stall, work them in the stall. Bring them out of the barn. Just lead them out of the barn. Let them rest for a second. If it's even just for a second, if they just stand there. If they get uppity, take them back to the stall. Work them. Get a heart rate up. Bring them back out. And they'll get the idea real quick. And one of her problems, she's had anxiety about mountain. So 
So now since I got it a little soft to the neck, I can control her. All I did was control her to go around me. I did not try to stop her. I just controlled her so she stays right here in this general area. Because if I, every time I step down to try to stop her from moving off this mountain block, it's just going to escalate, escalate. So I just bend her and just let her move. And once she stops, we just pet. Now, a normal person would say, okay, now let's put the foot in the stirrup. No, because when I did climb up here, she moved off. So we're going to step down. I'm going to walk her away from it. And walk her back to it. Pick my line up so if she does move. So I just turn around the tight circle. There, that was better. She took one little step. Like right there, she's trying to move off, I just bend her. Yes, a horse with anxieties and all, you let them, to a certain point, dictate where you go because like right now yeah I throw a foot in that stirrup but why I want her to do just that she stood here real pretty she didn't even try to move this time so if I try to get that foot in that stirrup too soon we're just going to feed that anxiety First, what I do one side, I gotta do the other. Like right there, I'm just gonna bend her, flex her, move her up here a little bit. Like I said, right now, I don't care if she's this far away. I just pulled her up back into her. And I'm gonna pat on it. Because you got to remember, every time I retreat, when she does something bad, I'm rewarding her for that bad behavior. So I'm going to stand up here just for a second and pet on her. And we're going to step down again. And same way I approach with saddle. I come to this area with the mountain block. I see so many times people chase a horse with the mountain block. There, good girl. And that's what I want. So right now, like I said, I know you can get on top of her and ride her, but even though she's doing things well, I still got to work on that anxiety. So I'm going to take that saddle off. but I'm going to put it right back on her. These breast collars that we sell, I like them. A little bit more to take off, but really keeps the saddle in place. Price we got them out in quality leather, you can't beat them. Now you notice every time when I approach this horse with that saddle, I just went like she didn't have no problems. Because if I did what I call stalk her with a saddle, 
it's just going to feed that anxiety. And I don't want to feed into it. I want to change it. So I'm going to take my line. I'm going to cradle it. So if I have to, I can just do this. Take it off of her. Put it on. Now, even with the pad, I want to stand right here. Front, right here in front of the shoulder. Now, everybody's got their technique. I use my leg. Just use my leg and pop it up there. And just let her stand. There we go. Get prepared. Take my leg. Throw it up there. See, I'm putting it up there like she's dead broke. Yeah, she doesn't have, have an anxiety problem with it. So that's pretty well cut and dry. Sorry it's been a while for videos, but with weather and other things, just I haven't been able to get to them. So, as I always say, one step at a time. Don't worry about the big picture. Look at the small picture. It's just like painting a picture. Each brush stroke counts. And then eventually you'll have a nice pretty picture. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, cut and dry. This really helped barn sour horses. Even though she did good today, which she better. I mean, it's to be expected. But I'll be honest with you. Um, now when Teresa will probably film her handling this mare, this mare will all be completely different. But within, it didn't take her long to realize that I was gonna take charge. And once she felt me take charge, she was able to relax. That's where y'all don't get. I see all these comments. Oh, poor little horsey, you're doing this, you're doing that. But damn it, watch the end of every video. That horse is always softer, more relaxed, and it's in my back pocket. Why? Because I took charge, people. And you're dealing with a thousand pound animal. And if they're in charge, they're gonna hurt you. Not even mean to. So you gotta give these horses respect your space. And they're a herd animal. I mean, that's the bottom line. So that's my preaching for a day. To my kids, grandkids, special person out there who's behind the camera, watch Day Lake Cadenier, and be true to horse, and they'll be true to you. God bless and take care.